Damn it, Sarah, you lied to me. You and the demon. I would have said this last night, but I did not want to worry Blair. You told me that Parnell would not find out that I was testifying against him. You said I would not have to appear in open court. David, listen to me. We all want to avoid an open hearing. But this is a direct order from the State Crime Commission. And what is the State Crime Commission doing to protect my wife? Sarah, I do not have to tell you what Parnell and his friends are like. David, I know you're worried. I am worried. We're all worried. Now, Tom's on the line with Albany trying to work things out. If you could just come by the office this afternoon, we could uh, talk this over, huh? All right. Back to the DA's office again, huh? Well, I might as well. And I'm going to bring along the two guys that have been following me for the last three weeks. Sarah, David, I've got to go. I have got to shoot. I'm already late. I'll try to get by your office later. But you can tell your boss huh, that he can expect to lose his star witness. Mm, you are indestructible this morning, darling. But. But. That means thanks, but no thanks. Well, I do have a breakfast meeting, and, um, your heart just isn't in it. That's the problem. It's Grant. He keeps pressuring me into using my connections to help Tempest. Oh, Wesley, darling, we had this discussion before, remember? You were going to help David. Give him the shirt off your back. He'll only discover it doesn't fit. Look, we can talk about helping David to death, Racine, but that means spending time with him. I've got all I can do to psych myself into having dinner with him tonight. Ah, oh, yes, the famous Harper family dinners. Forks on the left, knives in the back. You know, you're only opening doors for him, darling. You don't have to move in with him. You know, Grant is giving him $5 million for the expansion. I mean, you could drive a 747 through a door like that. I thought you were going to encourage Grant to spend. The more he invests with David, the worse they're both going to look when Tempest fails. What if it doesn't fail? Wesley, David is out of his depth. Within a month, he'll be drowning. All you have to do is just throw him an anchor. Magazine? Grayson Carr? The Louis the Sixteenth of the fashion world. And you're a very good friend. Yes. He'll review the showing of David's new line. Thumbs down from Grayson, and David won't be able to give Tempest away. How the hell do we get close to Grayson? Oh, darling, everyone has their little weakness. I thought you had a breakfast meeting this morning. I could cancel it and uh, eat here. Oh. I told you that if you gave Wesley a chance, he'd surprise you. Well, maybe he's finally growing up, finally maturing, huh? <laughs> I'm glad that loan shark business is over with. Blair was worried sick. Well, I'm afraid it's not quite over with yet. David may have to testify for the grand jury. Really? Hmm. I was thinking, maybe it'd be a good idea to get Blair out of town for a while. You know, give her a little vacation. Send her someplace like, uh, well, someplace that's quiet, peaceful, huh? Oh, she'd never go without David. And don't even suggest it. Blair is 30 years old. She is quite capable of running her own life without any help from us. You know, rather than take the heartbreaker over to Nassau, I thought it would be fun to go to Rio. What do you think? Well, why don't we just wait and go to Europe later on in the spring? Then we'll be able to see uh, Greg over there, too. I don't want to wait, Grant. No, no. No, of course you don't. No, I, I think uh, Rio, that sounds like a terrific idea. And there would be no pressing business problems that would interfere with your coming? I uh, wish I could predict what's going to happen in the next couple of months. <laughs> but whatever happens is going to have to happen without me, because we are going to Rio and Carnival, right? 
Is that a promise? You kidding? After all these years? How could I possibly resist you, my dear? Okay, Lori, start your movement. Nice. Take a break. Oh, you guys are great. I'm so glad she's working her tempest again, Dave. Believe me, so am I. I made a mistake in letting her sign, but Wesley Harper, I just want you to know that. She'd be much better off with you. Well, I can promise you one thing. As long as she's working for me, she will not become another Taryn Blake. I'd say that wasn't much of a problem. Are you sure you've never done this before? You were great. How did you feel? Kind of weird. Until I started getting into it. You got into it. You were really selling. And you were really lying. Well, it was, wasn't I? Do you want to meet my mother? Nope. You'll have to sooner or later. She'll be here all day. It's nothing personal. I'm just not too good with mothers. Laurie, makeup, pickups. Thank you, Robert. Mrs. Fenton, is my husband there? Oh, that's right, the shoot, I forgot. Uh, would you ask him to call me when he checks in with you? Thank you.
right now. I could walk out of the DA's office this afternoon. It is not your fault that David's in trouble. You're taking this way too personally. Mark, Blair and I have been friends since school. David thinks that I'm taking advantage of that. I did talk him into testifying. Maybe I'm not cut out for criminal law after all. Come on. You are a good lawyer and you're a terrific friend. One shouldn't have anything to do with the other. I think we should cancel this weekend, don't you? I mean, I love going to Foxdown, but it uh, might be better if I stayed out of David's way for a while. I can't make it anyway. There's just too much to do on this Newsbeat story. I mean, I am in way over my head. I can't find a focus. I uh, thought you were making Princess Machiavelli the focus. For Racine? Well, she certainly is the power broker. Are we all right? I wouldn't be here if we weren't all right. The Karen Cobb contracts. I know what signing her cost you, Sandy, and I am eternally grateful. Can we talk about that little promotion you promised me? Oh, darling, not right now. I really do need to find out how that two-on-a-date shoot is going. It's going great. There's enough electricity between Laurie and Chris to run the subways for a month. There is something really amazing going on behind his eyes. I find uh, a very challenging quality. I don't think it's his eyes we're seeing. But he certainly is sexy, and he doesn't have a mother. Mothers, I do not want to hear that word before lunch. Wesley wants more working days out of Laurie Caswell, and you know what that means. I get to go nine rounds with darling Dinah, trying to convince her that it's all in Laurie's best interest, which of course it is. And Julia has called three times today to see if there's any way to get Taryn out of that John Waite video. They are paying her a fortune to do the Waite video. Julia can be so stubborn when she doesn't get her own way. However, she did say lovely things about me to Mark Bailey for that article. I must remember to thank her for that. How long before he's done with that article, Racine? Oh, I don't think it will take me too much longer. So, Grayson, is Eyeline Magazine's powerful editor have an opinion about my new expectations, girl? Yes, I was very impressed with Laurie Caswell. I hear you stole her away from David Fenton. Yes, she is all mine. Oh. Mason, darling. Uh, oh, excuse me. I was going to call you. I'm glad to have saved you the dime, Anna. Oh, thank you. Uh, my house in St. Thomas is going to be free the entire month of December, and I was hoping you'd use it. Oh, I'm so sorry, darling, but Kenneth has already beaten you to it. Oh, no. Well, um, if you change your mind, do call, okay? Of course. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> Where on earth did you find her? Poor fool thinks her house in St. Thomas will make up for a mediocre fashion line. Boy, how she can wear her own designs completely escapes me. Escapes me, too. So, Wesley, tell me about Harper Worldwide's plans for Tempest Sportswear. Ah, hmm? uh, well, you'll have to ask David. He's responsible for his own success? Or failure? Failure. Mm -hmm. Oh. Well, from what I've seen so far, that hardly seems likely. And with your father's company behind him, well... Well, you are right, of course. I mean, now that his new line is back on the track again. I didn't know that, that it had faltered. Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, there were... I mean, there were just a few serious problems in the beginning, but, of course, Grant stepped in and, uh, helped David solve them. I mean, now everything's gonna be great. The new line is gonna be absolutely spectacular. Oh, I hear Thank your you. words, Wesley, and what's behind them. Now, come on, talk to me. <laughs> There is no dirt. Believe me. Not for a moment. I'm waiting. Now, Grayson, do you really think that I could be disloyal to one of my father's companies? Nothing's ever stopped you before.
that's the best. And that's definitely a wrap for lunch. Nice work, kids. Great, great, really nice, really nice. Hi, Sam. Hi. Hi. How you doing? Hi, Taryn. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Hey, listen, do you want to grab something to eat? I haven't had lunch for years. Come on. Aren't you glad to be out of the hospital? Oh, God, I would have been crazy. Oh, look at all those empty calories. Julia would kill me. Come on, I'm buying. Okay. Two hot dogs, please, with everything on it. Oh, the interview at San Tropez went great. It's the first time I've ever done that without Julia barging in every two sentences. She scared me to death the other night after the concert. I've never seen anyone so angry. Oh, she said I couldn't see you or John Waite ever again. I'd rather not see her ever again. Well, at least I'm in the same class as John Waite. No, it's nothing personal, Lori. It's just, it's just Julia. That's hot. What a great idea. You like them? Yeah. Thanks, I do too. I'm talking about hot. I know. <laughs> Chris York. <sighs> Isn't mm. he great? Mm. Trey Hunk. But forget it. It's a major problem getting hung up on somebody you're working with. But you went out with John Wade. <laughs> yeah. See what I mean? I want to help Tempest realize its full potential, David. Grant. I understand that you want Tempest to grow, but it is the new line that I'm concerned with Why right confine now. yourself to just one area? Can't you design a menswear line at the same time? You can't go on ignoring 50% of the human race, you know. <laughs> the menswear line is a great idea. I can even get a male model to represent it. But I do not have time to design and develop an entirely new line before the December show. Why can't you? Your women's sportswear line is almost finished. Why can't you, David, huh? Because I am a designer and not a machine. I can't just, uh, call downstairs to the creative department and order up a menswear line on a moment's notice. It isn't done like that. I gotta have a concept, theme, ideas. And right now, I, uh, I got other problems to deal with. What problems? Blair's all right, isn't she? Yeah, yeah, she was fine this morning. I called her earlier, but the line was busy. The truth is, it hasn't been easy on her. I have been under a lot of pressure from the DA's office. How can I help, David? What does she need? You know, there's nothing in the world that I wouldn't do for her. Well, I would like to get her out of New York City for a while. And I thought that, um... Possibly she could spend a few weeks at Foxtown, just until this whole thing is cleared up with the DA. Grant, she needs to get some rest. Well, if it's rest she needs, Foxtown isn't far enough away. Uh, she'll be in New York every day for one reason or another. A friend of mine has a place just outside of Zurich. Fully staffed, very quiet. Switzerland. Why not? She used to go over there for a month or so every winter before you two were married. She loves the place. She'll be able to spend some time with her brother, too. Greg's in uh, Geneva right now. What do you think, huh? I think you're right. She gets some peace, quiet, and uh, Greg is there to Keep her company. Be good for her. Be good for you, too. You'll be able to get on with your work without worrying about her so much. There's only one problem. How do we convince Blair to go? Mrs. Fenton's still at the apartment. You stay with her. Fenton just left Harper Worldwide. Miller will handle him. No. You wait until you hear from me. Marie, Mrs. Fenton, when my husband gets back, would you tell him I'm leaving for Foxdown now? Thank you. Hello? Hello?
got off the phone. I've been trying to reach you for an hour. So we might go out to Fox down a little bit early. Spend some time together. Oh, oh. <laughs> hey, are you all right? Yes, I'm fine. And that's a great idea. Why don't we go right now? Great! Wait, wait, what's your hurry? Just leaving, Mr. Parnell. We're right behind him. Pay interview. Go. I'm dying to hear all about it. Where on earth did that animal come from? Isn't it adorable? It was delivered with this. That's very expensive. John gave it to me. Well, it'll have to go back. And so will that cat. They're mine, and I'm keeping them. I've never had a pet of my own, and everything around here belongs to you, including me. It's always tear and do this and do that. And you talk about putting a tear and Blake doll on the market. You already have one. All right, Taryn, stop it. That's enough. Please. All you want me to do is to work. So put me in the hospital. That's not true, and what a terrible thing to say. What could you possibly want that I don't give you? I want to be around people my own age. I want to see Laurie and I want to see John. All right, all right, stop it. Don't holler. I've got a rotten headache. I suppose you can see that Caswell girl. You're going to do it anyway behind my back, aren't you? But the rock and roll singer, I don't even know. I haven't met him. Well, you can meet him. He's nice. And he's nice to me. Of course, I'll meet him, Terry. I just want you to be happy. Can I keep the kitten? No! Oh. OK, I'll be reasonable. The store gets the kitten back, and I keep the bracelet, John Waite, and Lori. Good. I am so delighted you've decided to sign with the agency. Mm -hmm. Listen, why don't we make a date for next week for you to come in and we'll talk about some new career directions for you. Hmm? Oh, Wednesday at 3? Good. Yes, I'll have Sandy call you and confirm. Oh, yes, he is a sweetie, isn't he? Fine, darling. Thank you. Bye-bye. Sandy, make a list of possible bookings for Karen Cobb. She's coming in next Wednesday. What is this? More fan mail for Laurie Caswell? Great to see you. She certainly is making an impression. Hold, please. Wesley Harper on 7. Oh, fine. I'll take that in the office. Oh, and Sandy, call Mark Beatty and remind him we have a meeting with Dinah Caswell at 4 o'clock. Oh, and Sandy, that picture of Laurie Caswell, I want that in my office. Wesley, darling, your office told me you'd already left for the day. I'm out here at Foxdown with Blair. Did you speak to Dinah Caswell yet? Wesley, I have a meeting with Dinah at 4 o'clock. Now, would you just trust me to handle this? Look, it's not you that I'm worried about. It's Dinah. We've got the Expectations Cosmetics layout to shoot. We've got the European promotion coming up. And it has got to be hot if we're going to outsell the Ferrier Cosmetics line. Ferrier? Mud packs and herbal baths? Come on, all you need in Europe is a little more time with expectations, that's all. Yes, and Laurie Caswell. You know, Taryn Blake's suspension is up in February. Now, isn't that wonderful? You can have both of them. 
I don't want Taryn back at Harper Cosmetics, Racine. Did I hear that word buy out? Because I'm warning you, it'll cost plenty. <laughs> Suspending Taryn's contract was Grant's idea. Just let him pay for it, all right? Go just as high as you like. My, 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 we certainly are in a generous mood today, aren't we? Must be all that fresh air. Or did Grace and Carr break down and pick up the check for lunch? Oh, he picked up a lot more than that. He can't wait to find out what's going wrong with the new Tempest line. And you can't wait to tell him. Oh, darling, I really have to run. Dinah Caswell awaits. I'll talk to you later, all right? Darling Dinah, into the fray. Great kids. Kids? You know, uh, I thought I'd hate modeling. Really? I love it. I'm beginning to change my mind. Well, steamy stuff. <sighs> yeah, I sort of. Dinah is head of. Uh... Harper advertising, I could have stopped this at any time. Oh, yeah. Especially since David Fenton isn't around. No, no, no. I think uh, they look very good together. Uh, very... Steamy. Yeah. <laughs> Intense. Electric. All of the above. All of the above. Folks, here comes Racine. <laughs> Dinah, darling. Well, obviously, we got here just in time. Uh, Dinah, this is Mark Bailey, the reporter from Newsbeat magazine, doing that article on modeling. You remember, I told you. And, Mark, this is Dinah Caswell. I've told you all about her. Oh, I'm sure there are one or two points you've overlooked, Racine. How do you do, Mrs. Caswell? Mr. Bailey. Well, I will uh, just leave you two to talk. I'll go say hello to Laurie. Laurie, I need you to sign out before you go. I'll be right there. Laurie, darling, could I speak to you just a minute? Excuse us, Chris. The school calendar is absolutely brutal. Don't they give you kids vacations anymore? I mean, the Easter or Passover or Lent. Lent! It's got to be Lent. <laughs> we do get a week off for Easter. Ah, could you take it now and make it up to them in April? <laughs> it doesn't work that way, Racine. I was afraid of that. Very, very inconvenient. How do you like Chris York? I mean, to work with. Great. I mean, no problem so far. It's really fun. I'm glad. Well, I, I was afraid you wouldn't like him. I'm so glad I was wrong. In fact, maybe I could schedule you two together more often. Come on, Lori. Michael's gonna be angry if we're late again. 
Could you? Well, I could try, of course, with you in school so often. <laughs> Thanks. I gotta go. My mom's waiting. Thanks. That is one, Brad Harper. I wanted to let you know that my daughter Blair will be leaving for Zurich sometime within the next 24 hours. Yes. Yes, it's a big relief knowing that she'll be safe now. Thank you, Doctor. We've checked out the Fox Down area, Mr. Parnell. No cops, no security. Ready when you are. This? Oh, I wish you and I could spend more time together like we used to. Like this. I always feel safe when I'm here with you. I really mean it, Wesley. Thank you for helping David. Well, David is part of Harper now. Anything for the old home team, you know? <laughs> Sounds like you've been talking to Daddy. Oh, no, listening to Daddy. Nobody talks to Grant, except you. Wesley, I know you think he doesn't love you, but he does. Oh, sure. It's just that he still thinks of us as children. Yes. You'll still be the Princess Bride at 80 years old, and I'll be so old that I'll have to hobble into the boardroom, <laughs> and Grant will still be exactly the same. Oh, what about Greg? What's in store for baby brother? Oh, I would say maybe a little minor role, like President of the United States, with Daddy is the entire cabinet, of course. Speak of the devil. Master approaches. Well, let's go in. Maybe David came in with Daddy. Oh, gee, that's an entertaining thought. Daddy teaching David how not to fall off the grave tree. Will you come on? <laughs> Michael, how many times do I have to apologize for our being late? We were hung up for an hour on the express. It wasn't our fault. The truck turned over. I'm sorry. I was just trying to help. All right, all right. Let's just forget about it. I'm sorry, too. It's been a bad day all the way around. I'll be glad when it's over. Dinah, I am sick of this. I work 10, 12 hours a day. I want to come home to my family. Your family's right here, and you don't seem to be very happy about it. You walk in an hour late for dinner, and all you can talk about is David Fenton, Jake Larner, and Ray Scene. We can't have a conversation in this house anymore unless it's about diet, skin care, or Tempest Sportswear versus Harper Cosmetics. You are the one who convinced me to let her go into modeling in the first place. I mean, it's not as though I'm never home. She works one day a week. And we spend the remaining six days talking about it. Hi, everybody. Oh, sorry to interrupt. Oh, wow, prime rib. We had pizza. Hi, Jenna. How's the science fair project going? Uh, are those the soybeans? The mung beans. Mung beans. They're OK, I guess. Maybe excused? Yeah, of course. I didn't want to argue in front of Lori. Michael, would you rather she just gave it up? No. She enjoys it too much. You know what I want? I would like this family back the way it was the day before we got Racine's first letter. And I don't think that's going to happen. There's 20 of us parachuting into a swamp, right? Mm -hmm. It's not until we hit the water that we see a network news team strapped to the runner of a chopper, filming the whole thing. 
Strange how the press shows up in the oddest places. No place is safe. <laughs> you were awfully young to be in Vietnam. Sixty-seven. No, I was eighteen, nineteen. And you? I was. I was very young. Very young. Very young. Very, very young. young. Yeah. What if I went to Denton, Texas? What would I learn about racing? Not very much, I'm afraid. There is uh, no one left in Denton, Texas who'd even remember me. You are a very unusual woman. Come on. I doubt that anyone could forget. Racine. Who would name a daughter after a 17th century French poet? And a poet who obviously never met a woman like you. Let's see, what is it? Um, she wavers. Hesitates. Un amant à la femme. In a word, she is a woman. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, come on. You're not really surprised I read my namesake's poetry. Uh, based on what I've heard about you, I'm surprised you read it all. Oh, really? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But, of course, now that you've met me, you know different. I'd like to know more. Do you? Showtime. Thank you, Janet. Yes, hello. Blair, darling, you haven't eaten a thing. I'm not hungry, Mother. Tell them he left New York at 5.30. Yes, Rosanna. I see. Thank you very much. Well, nothing to worry about. No accident report on David. Truck overturned on the expressway. Traffic's been held up for four or five hours. Well, then why hasn't he called? He probably couldn't find a payphone, and he wouldn't want to stop anyway. Well, that sounds like David. Ever considerate of others. Blair, darling, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine, Mother, really. But I do think I'll go down to the stables for a while. Will you call down there as soon as David arrives? Of course. So late, Princess. Why don't you go down in the morning? I'll go with you. No. I'm fine, okay? I'm not going to sneak a ride or anything. I just want to say goodnight to Chloe. <laughs> Hi, baby. Hello. Come here. Come here. Oh, yeah. Everything's gonna be all right, isn't it? Maybe we can even sneak away for a walk tomorrow. Silly. Good night, baby.
tried to get off the expressway to call, but it, it was impossible. I have never seen it so jammed. <laughs> well, there's no answer. Blair must be on her way back. I'm going to go down to Stables and meet her. Hello. Hello, David. <clears throat> David Fenton here. You. No, you let. David, what's the matter? That was Parnell. The lone shark. Grant. They have kidnapped Blair. Walsh has made the move from Minnesota to Beverly Hills. Make the move to SoapNet and catch Beverly Hills 90210 next.